Hey guys, Tony DeNaro here. Welcome back to the channel. Today, I'm gonna be talking about a question that you might have if you're investing in or looking into stable coins, a question that many of us have when we first start out, are they really stable? I'm gonna be sharing my thoughts with you exactly on that question, going through the examples about how these stable coins maintain the stability or don't and sharing some famous examples with you of how people have lost billions of dollars in some cases, picking the wrong stablecoin projects. All right, so let's get right into the information that you came here for. Are stable coins really stable? And we're gonna start off talking about the 2022 stable coin market cap trend or what I call the move to cash. If you aren't aware, the stablecoin supply has been increasing over the last year from about $30 billion to the current market cap total of over $180 billion. Why is that happening? Now, some people might think that this money is just being made up out of nowhere. We know that that is not how stablecoins work. Money moves from someone's wallet into the crypto ecosystem and into stable coins. That is where the money is coming from. But why are people moving money into stable coins? That's really the question that we should be asking. Now, if you haven't been paying attention, the broader crypto market, Bitcoin, Ethereum, Shiba, everything is down about 40% from November. And simply put, people that want to keep their money in the crypto ecosystem don't want to hold on to Bitcoin or Ethereum while they are falling. And so they move their money into stable coins. That way they can keep their money right there in their crypto wallet. And since stable coins by definition are stable, they're not taking losses on their crypto portfolio while they're waiting for the overall crypto market to stabilize or find a new direction. So the question that you are here to get an answer to is are stable coins really stable? And the short answer is yes. At the end of this video, I'm going to go through some examples of where that was not the case and what you need to watch out for. But let's talk about why in general, stable coins are indeed stable. And if you own them, you can expect whatever you have invested in them to remain stable. Now, Fiat stable coins are the bulk of stable coins that are out there on the market in terms of market cap. And in general, they're pegged to the US dollar. Each stable coin is worth one US dollar. But fiat stable coin stability is typically managed by the platform or the company that is running that stable coin. And the reserves of these stable coins are typically comprised of US dollars, US treasuries, reverse repo notes, commercial paper, and secured loans. The basket of these reserves or the backing of these stable coins really depends on each stable coin or the company running it. And that is part of your due diligence to investigate when you pick a stable coin. Now, if you've looked at any charts and we are going to in just a second, you might've noticed that although these coins are pegged at the US dollar and should have a value of $1, there is some occasional fluctuation. Why does that happen? Well, quite frankly, it's because stable coins can be traded on the crypto markets and they are subject to the laws of supply and demand. And the dynamics of this supply and demand process cause some minor fluctuations in stable coins, typically, within about a 1% range, although from time to time we see it go a little bit outside the 1% range. So let's look at some charts so I can show you that indeed, for the most part, these stable coins are very stable. And this is not gonna be a video that's a deep dive on any one particular coin. I just want to review with you at a very high level these stable coins that are most popular and show you that yes, they are stable. And then we'll talk about the ones that are not. The first one that we're going to look at is Tether. This chart goes all the way back to 2016. You can see right there where the line is that it has been pegged at the $1 mark with a little bit of an exception in mid 2018. Tether has been more or less trading at $1. Going on to the next one, we have number two in terms of market cap, USDC. And you can see from the line here that USDC going all the way back to 2019 has been trading right at the $1 level 
for many, many years, although back in early 2019, it did have a 4% increase up to a dollar and four cents. And there have been a couple times going back over the past couple of years where it has dropped as low as 97 or 98 cents for a day or two. Next up, we have another big one in terms of market cap, Binance USD, ticker symbol BUSD. This chart goes back all the way to before January of 2020. You can see the peg right there at $1 and it has maintained that stability right at $1 with a couple of exceptions on the down and upside. I see uh, on the high side, it's gotten as high as a dollar and one cent. And on the low side, it did have a spike down to 94 cents for a day or two back in May, 2020. Other than that, this coin has been very stable. The final fiat backed stable coin that we're gonna be looking at is the Euro Tether. Now this chart might look a little bit different to you if you're looking at it from the United States because it's supposed to be pegged to a dollar, right? And this chart is showing a dollar twenty, a dollar thirty, currently trading at about a dollar and ten cents. What I want you to know when you're looking at this chart is the Euro Tether is not pegged to the US dollar, it's pegged to the Euro. If I were to go to a chart that showed this in terms of the Euro, you would see that it has been consistently pegged at one euro. It would be a straight line across. The reason that this chart shows so much fluctuation is because this chart is reflected in terms of US dollars. And it has been very steady pegged at one euro if you look at it in terms of the euro. Now that we've talked about the stability of fiat backed stable coins, I want to talk to you about the other types of stable coins. Did you know that there's other types of stable coins that are backed by things other than fiat. If you didn't, please go back and watch my first video on stable coins. I'll put a link for you right up here. Yes, there are other types of stable coins and they might not be what you think when you're buying them. Let's talk about non-fiat stable coins. There are other stable coins that are backed by crypto, backed by commodities such as gold, and even algorithmic stable coins which are backed by nothing other than an algorithm and these may be subject to more risk than fiat backed stable coins and more volatility dai is one of the more well-known crypto backed stable coins it's soft pegged to the us dollar and it uses a target rate feedback mechanism or trfm for short in combination with the possibility of collateral auctions to maintain price stability. Now that is a mouthful. I'll do a video about DAI for you in a separate video. It's not really relevant to this discussion and it is a little bit complicated. But what you need to know is that DAI's reserves are comprised of different cryptocurrencies, the most common being Ethereum or USDC. And when we look at the chart for DAI, we can see that this crypto backed stable coin has actually been pretty stable here we see going back to january 2020 that it has more or less been holding right at one dollar with a little bit of variation a little bit of volatility in the early part of 2020. the next one that i want to talk about with you is a commodity backed stable coin tether gold ticker symbol xaut now tether gold is pegged to the price of gold so as you might imagine the price of gold fluctuates this commodity backed stable coin will fluctuate with the price of gold each individual xaut token represents one troy fine ounce of london good delivery gold and that gold is backed by actual bars of gold held in a vault in Switzerland. Yes, if you decide that you want to pick up your gold when you cash out, you can fly to Switzerland and pick it up. Each XAUT is capable of being fractionalized when you trade it up to six decimal points. And the price of XAUT, as I mentioned just a minute ago, will fluctuate with the price of gold. Let's take a look at the chart of this stable coin and see how it's been performing. And as you can see here in the chart, it is fluctuating in the past couple of years between 1500 bucks up to a current price near $2,000, just like the price of gold. Now stick with me, we're almost to the end. We're about to talk about the juicy stuff, algorithmic based stable coins and how people lost billions of dollars. And my advice to you about what you should do if you're looking into stable coins, 
how to avoid the bad ones. Let's talk about some algorithmic based stable coins. The first one that I'm going to look at is one of the more well known in this category. It is called Ampleforth. Now, Ampleforth uses a rebase function and supply smoothing, fancy words for an algorithm, to try and maintain a price peg of $1 per coin. Now there's a bunch of fancy coding. I'm not going to go into all of that in this video. I put a little bit of it up here for you to look at. Not really relevant. If you want me to do a video for you on Ampleforth, I'm happy to do that. But just know that the algorithm takes a look at the price of the coin, the supply and the demand, and makes adjustments along the way. If things are getting out of whack from one side to the other, the algorithm attempts to reestablish that peg at $1. And because things can sometimes get out of whack in a hurry and they don't want to be making big adjustments to the coin, there is also a lag function built into the Ampleforth algorithm. Again, some programming code in there for you, not for this video, but the rebase lag is set so that the price is corrected to 10% per day to hit the target rate. In layman's terms, what that means is that this algorithmic coin may have some volatility greater than what you're used to seeing above or below $1. And depending on the rebase and the lag function, that it could take a few days to get back in control. Let's look at the chart and see how that's worked out for Ampleforth. Here we have a chart going back to September 2019, and you can see that for the most part, it's done a pretty good job, the algorithm, at keeping the price of Ampleforth at a dollar. But you can see there have been some pretty major spikes. We have one up to almost $4 in the middle of 2020, and quite a few spikes since September of 2020, over $2. Although the algorithm has done a pretty good job of returning Ampleforth back to the pegged price of $1 per coin. So now that we've seen that fiat-backed stable coins do tend to remain very stable, DAI, a crypto-backed stable coin, has done a good job. Commodity-backed stable coins tend to fluctuate with the commodity that is backing them. And Ampleforth, an algorithmic-backed stable coin, had a little bit tougher time of maintaining that tight stability around the $1 peg. Let's talk about some stable coins which have been massive failures. This first one that I'm going to talk about was a big deal in 2021. Even Mark Cuban was involved in this project. It was a stable coin called Iron with a token that was backing it called Titan. Let's talk about this real briefly and then I'm gonna show you the chart and a couple of other quick examples of failed stable coins so you can know that not all stable coins are stable and not all of them are safe. In June of 2021, the project called Iron famously crashed in one day. Iron was tied to both the Iron Titanium token called Titan and the USDC coin. So in order to mint an Iron stable coin, you had to deposit both a Titan coin and a USDC. In the matter of a couple of hours, Titan, the token, not the stable coin, Titan fell from $60 to fractions of a penny. And in the process of Titan crashing, it also tanked the iron stable coin. Both of these projects are now dead money. Let's look at the charts. Here is the chart for iron. You can see that in the early part of 2021, iron was doing a pretty good job of holding that $1 peg, but something happened in June and it fell to 70 cents. Let's take a look at Titan to figure out what happened. Titan being one of the coins in combination with USDC that you needed to use to mint an iron stable coin. Titan was on fire rising in a matter of a few weeks from $0 up to actually over 60 bucks. I'm not sure why this chart shows it at $39, but as Titan rose in value, at some point, some big whales decided to take their money out of Titan. And in a matter of a couple hours, Titan fell to fractions of a penny. And as I mentioned, it took the stable coin iron with it. In total, over $1.2 billion of market cap was wiped off the exchanges 
only a few lucky people were able to get their money on the way out. Now, this was not a rug pull or a hack. It's what was called a bank run. There are dozens of videos if you care to look into what happened with Titan and Iron. I'm not going to go into all of that in this video. Let's talk about a couple of other stable coin fails. Other recent failures in the last year or so include several other algorithmic stable coin projects. ESD, empty set dollar stable coin was one of them. DSD, dynamic set dollar stable coin was a second. And basic cash stable coin ticker BAC was another one worth taking a quick look at. I want to put up a page from the Basic Cash website so you can see what they had on their website. Basic Cash is an algorithmic stablecoin pegged to one US dollar. Then look at the bottom, the current price, one penny. What happened to these coins? Well, let's take a look at the charts and see. Here is the chart for Basic Cash. January 2021, this algo ran the price of the coin up to $1.50 and then it could not maintain stability over the course of several weeks into late February of 2021. The price fell, fell, fell down to 25 cents. It attempted a recovery, reaching 50 cents, held that, and then slowly bled out over the course of several months. And this coin is now basically worth zero. Moving on to the next coin, empty set dollar coin ticker ESD. In late 2020, the algorithm looked promising. It was holding that price peg of $1 fairly well. There was a spike up to $1.50 and then the algo failed and this coin also plummeted and it is now basically worth $0. The last one that we're going to take a look at the chart was dynamic set dollar coin. Uh, going back into late 2020, early 2021, this one had a quick spike up to $2.50. The algo made a valiant attempt to reestablish the peg of a dollar over the course of several weeks. But as you can see, this algorithmic stable coin also failed and it is currently worth $0. So now that we've seen some stable coins which fabulously imploded and lost all of their value, what do we need to know in terms of a wrap up? Well, first of all, when you're investing in a stable coin, it is really important that you do your own due diligence and investigate that project. Don't just take the word of someone on Reddit or Twitter or YouTube. Do some actual homework and in looking into that coin. You need to understand what type of stable coin it is. First of all, is it backed by fiat? Is it backed by crypto? Is it backed by a commodity? Or is it backed by an algorithm? No matter which kind of stable coin that you're investing in, it is also important to understand that these are not backed by a U.S. government. Stable coins will always have some sort of inherent risk, whether that's from a bank run on the coin itself, from destabilization of the reserve, which is backing it like for example, if Ethereum or USDC were to tank and the coin is backed by one of those, there's also a risk of hacking or an algorithmic failure if you're dealing with an algorithmic backed stable coin. Some people say, well, what if the entire crypto market crashes? What if Bitcoin, Ethereum, everything crashes? Are stable coins still safe? Well, I think that if you're looking at a fiat backed stable coin, in my opinion, you should be okay. These fiat backed stable coins are backed by US dollars and treasuries in most cases. And if people are fleeing Bitcoin, Ethereum, or other crypto coins, they're going to most likely put them in something that is backed by the US dollar. They're going to put their money in a fiat backed stable coin like Tether or USDC. Now, between those two coins, I personally prefer USDC. Tether, if you have not looked into it, has a lot of questions about do they really hold all of the reserves that they say that they do and are they properly being audited? Personally, I'm staying away from Tether and if I have to put my money in a stable coin, I'm picking USDC. 
That is all I have for you today on are stable coins truly stable? Hopefully this helped you understand a little bit more about the different types of stable coins, what they do to maintain their stability. If you have any questions about stable coins, please drop them in the comments below and don't forget to buy and hold that subscribe button on your way out the door. It really does help out with the YouTube algorithm. I am Tony DeNaro. I want to thank you for watching and I will see you on the next video. She thinks that I'm afraid, but I don't break. I heard you question my stability.